Good morning. Welcome to the Community Voice. I'm Steve Graddick, your host. Delighted to have you with us. And we're very pleased to have in the studio Dwayne Hack, president of West Georgia Right to Life. I think we've been doing this almost 20 years. Is we that? have. So yep. uh, I don't look a day older, but now you've got a beard and you look a lot older. <laughs> so anyway. A sea captain. <laughs> sea captain, yeah, you know, Tally or <laughs> Aloha or whatever. Um, anyway, well, welcome. Um, generally, we always try to bring you on at least once a year. And we always tend to try to book it, uh, this being the 19th annual Stand for Life. Uh, Georgia Right to Life does something called, I think, a life chain throughout the state. Tell they us do. about that, and particularly about Stand for Life. Okay, well, Georgia Right to Life, okay, we are a chapter of Georgia Right to Life. Uh, West Georgia Right to Life oversees Carroll, Douglas, Heard, Harrelson County. We've even had some opportunities over the past uh, six months to get into East Alabama. Uh, so uh, we've extended and broadened our horizon a little bit. But we are a chapter of Georgia Right to Life. There's 28 chapters across the state of Georgia for Georgia Right to Life, um, en encompassing the whole state, really, from north on the Tennessee border all the way down to Florida border. And so uh, every year in the month of October, because October is um, national uh, right to life, life change, and so Georgia Right to Life has it in every chapter that's available to do it. And then West Georgia Right to Life, like you said, this is our 19th year. Mm -hmm. uh, I came on here the first time with you, and we had the first one. And we were doing it in June and October. And then we decided once a year we'll tie you into the national program. So this will be our 19th year. Uh, coming this uh, first Saturday. First year, you didn't know if anybody would show up. Well, you know, we could spend a whole lot of time talking about that, but the first year we did it, it was in uh, January, um, right after the Georgia Right to Life March, and it was about a dozen of us, and we set up right up on the square, and we were right in front of the, uh, on the square, marching up and down with uh, loudspeakers, and uh, it was an interesting time. You know, a lot of people stopped by. We had candles, and uh, it, that was our first one that we did, and then we did one later in the summer, and now we just turned it to October. Tell us about the one in October. Tell us uh, there, there are no there are no uh, candles, and there's uh, no PA, and it's really always been somewhat just standing in silence with signs, of course. That's right. That's exactly what we do. So it's uh, Saturday, October 21st, and it's from 10 to 11 a.m., uh, and you can park. It's on Highway 27 South on the sidewalk in front of Walmart. So basically, you can park over by the what's that Murphy uh, Murphy gas station there, mm -hmm. the Walmart gas station. Walk up that little hill, and then we form a line. Uh, last year we were blessed. We had uh, a line that went from Stripping Chapel on the sidewalk all the way down to past Verizon, almost to Charlie's. Um, and so we do it every year, and it's it's commemorating and it's memorializing. You know, 63 million babies have been aborted since 1973. So it is plus. a silent. Yeah, plus. plus. That's what we plus, know of. Plus. There's two states that don't even provide the numbers to the uh, CDC. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, it is a silent time. We have signs available for people that want to hold them. Uh, we also encourage you to make your own sign if you want to do that and bring it. Uh, the last couple of years, uh, we've gone ahead and, and made this an outreach opportunity for churches. We've had some really good success with it. So any church that brings 10 or more teens, you know, ages 12 and up, will get $100 from West Georgia Right to Life. You could use it for any function you want to do. Um, but last year we had three different churches that showed up with uh, numerous teen groups. And what it is, it's an outreach um, for the church. You know, it allows them to have some fellowship together, but be a common bond for life. And, and we really strive to be able to reach and plant a seed in that young group because, you know, that's the group that's coming behind us. Mm -hmm. And so we want to plant the pro-life uh, message with them as well. And we hand out information as well. We walk up and down the line, give people information to take home. So, again, hope you can join us. Um, it's, again, Saturday, October 21st from 10 to 11. Uh, just park down over at Murphy Oil, Murphy Gas Station, walk up the hill, and join us in our line. It's always interesting to see what the passerbys, uh, how they respond. You know, typically it's been really positive. Um, you know, you do get a couple of them that um, – blow the horns and you know no it's our choice it's our by you know all that kind of stuff and we're used to that what was interesting is 
two years ago, we did one out in Douglasville. Mm -hmm. So if you're familiar with Highway 5 in Douglasville, we've uh, we've formed a line there across the street from McDonald's on Highway 5, and we formed it all the way down Highway 5. And then over by Kroger, we had another group set up over there. And I was really amazed of how positive that was. And it's kind of planted a seed for us is that we may start looking a little bit more into Douglasville. Um, very positive. Um, people even rolled down the windows and said, thanks for what you're doing. You know, we were expecting apples and stuff thrown at us at cars going by, but it was really positive. So Shan Gatewood is our contact person over there uh, in Douglasville. Just very briefly, tell us a little something about her. She's an interesting lady. Yeah, yeah. She's the, she, I think her tagline is pro-life candy lady. I, I don't understand <laughs> how all that works out, but I've talked to her a few times, and, and Shan's... Um, Shan's on fire for life. I think she even has a uh, Twitter line. She's um, she's out there quite constantly. On uh, she's from the Midwest. She's moved here uh, two or three years ago, three or four years ago. But she helps us, uh, African American lady, um, big pro lifer, um, wants to do what's right. She's been out there visiting churches for us as well. So we're grooming, you know, Shan to help us out in Douglas County and, and kind of go over there because I think that's more of an area that we really could make a big difference in Douglas County. Our guest this morning is Dwayne Hack, president of West Georgia Right to Life. we got a lot more with Dwayne, but first, these words. Oak Mountain Academy is an innovative school of academic excellence celebrating a 61-year legacy. I'm Patrick Uran, head of school, inviting you to join us for our annual fall festival. On Friday, October 27th at 3.30 p.m., join us at the OMA gym for food, fun, and fellowship. Costume, games, raffles, and competitions are just a few of our fall festival exciting activities. For more information, visit us at oakmountain.us. Discover your journey at OMA. Prepare, explore, and achieve. Health is a journey. It's making better choices, even when it's not easy. It's taking care of yourself and the people you love. At Tanner Health System, we're there for you with every step, with primary care, heart care, cancer care, women's care, orthopedics, surgical services, and so much more. We're dedicated to helping you live and feel your best. So let's get on that journey to health. You've got places to be for many years to come. Find us at Tanner.org. Good morning. Welcome back to the Community Voice. I'm Steve Graddick, your host. Delighted to have you with us. We're very pleased to have in studio Dwayne Hag, president of West Georgia Right to Life. We talked about the annual Stand for Life coming up October 21st, 10 to 11, in front of Wally World. And um, one topic we, we unfortunately haven't spent a whole lot of time on in previous years, so the, 20, the two decades that you've been coming <laughs> in, or almost two decades, is personhood. And it's kind of a term that it certainly doesn't get any media coverage. It gets very little coverage, uh, if any at all, uh, nationally. But it's the, it seems as if the pro-life movement made a big mistake. I think it was in 1977 when the Hyde Amendment first appeared and the exceptions came about. And we kind of give, gave up ground that allowed the argument to be a pure argument and and now we're you know everybody's whether it's six weeks 15 weeks you know and if you don't have the exceptions then you're not going to be able to maintain your your office you're going to get voted out et cetera, et cetera. but in so doing we qualified the personhood of the unborn Mm -hmm. And there is something that will resolve all of these issues, which is the personhood amendment. Right. So with that set up, just give us a definition for those who've never heard the term of personhood mm -hmm. and, and why it's so critical. Okay. Good intro. Uh, you're you're going to start hearing more and more about personhood if you haven't already um, amongst you know, some of the major networks. Um, they have tried to keep it down for so long, but now we're starting to see more and more momentum towards personhood and we've really got the wind in our sails moving forward what personhood is i mean it basically in its simplest form personhood is the right to have rights it's the culture and legal recognition of the inalienable that's god-given man-made equal rights of human beings regardless of age ability environment or manner of uh, conception 
And and that's the Georgia right to life's doctrine on personhood. You know, back in 73, uh, Judge Blackman, um, Harry Blackman, was one of the ones that voted for Roe v. Wade. But afterwards, you know, they all the justices come out and give their own consensus and their opinions. And he wrote the opinion for the Roe v. Wade decision. And here's what he said, Steve, which was really interesting. And let me preface that by saying that was 1973. So that's 50 years ago today that Judge Blackman made this statement. And he said, if the suggestion of personhood of the preborn is established, the abortion rights case, which is Roe v. Wade, of course collapses. For the right of the fetus to life is guaranteed specifically by the 14th Amendment of the United of the Constitution. And I carry this with me on all my meetings that I go to across this West Georgia area. And the 14th Amendment says, nor shall any state deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, nor deny to any person within its jurisdiction the equal protection of laws. And so Judge Blackman, again, you know, 50 years ago, he already had made a comment that personhood, if it ever came about, was going to assist in overturning Roe v. Wade, which that was part of the basis for it. Um, the establishment for the fetus in the womb as a person was paramount in the pro-life decision in the Mississippi Dobbs case. That was one of the basis parts of it. And even though we're not totally in agreement with the heartbeat bill in Georgia, I wanted to tie what some of the verbiage that's in the heartbeat bill in Georgia to personhood because it does call it out. Uh, the heartbeat bill in Georgia, we didn't back that. Georgia Right to Life did not back it. West Georgia Right to Life did not back it simply because it added exceptions. And for some 50 plus years that Georgia Right to Life has been uh, around, uh, there's never been exceptions in our stances. We were always were no exceptions. And so once Georgia brought that into the system, we said we can't. We can't back this because we're a, a Christian pro-life organization. We believe that life is valuable from the point of conception all the way to the natural death. But according to obst uh, obst obstrix specialists, at about six weeks of gestation, the embryo has a tiny tube that will eventually become part of the heart. The tube starts to flutter at about six weeks, and modern ultrasound machines augment the flutter, and both doctors and patients have the ability to recognize the sound in its early stages of development of the heart. That's where the heartbeat bill really came about. In addition to the number of Georgia, well, I'll get into this in a second, but the personhood part really plays a big role in this. Uh, the bill expands personhood for preborn babies by extending Georgia's state income tax exemptions for dependents to babies in the womb, which is first time we're the only state in the union that has that in there, including personhood. The heartbeat bill did have that silver lining, and it says that Georgia's law's def definition of person is now natural person. To know this includes the baby in the womb. This change now recognizes personhood at the moment of fertilization. That's been our goal as well as Georgia Right to Life's goal all these years. And again, the bill expands personhood for preborn babies by ex by extending Georgia state income tax laws. So, you see, you know, th there was some good in uh, HB was it 481? I believe it was mm -hmm. the heartbeat bill. There was some good that came out of it, and it's now people are recognizing personhood um, as a live human being inside the womb of the mother, which never was that before. Again, remember back in 73, there was no technology per se that we have today. I mean, now I could, you know, I saw 3D sonograms of my grandkids and I'll see people at our church where we go and they'll talk about, you know, I'll, we've had several folks have had babies over the last several years, several months. And I'll talk to them about it. And I said, yeah, I mean, it was so real when they went and had the sonogram. And so they didn't have that in 73. You know, now when you pick up the heartbeat, there was something I wrote somewhere in here. There's a, there's a, magazine called the prism here it is and it's a left-leaning pro-choice pro-choice woman's rights ma magazine and it stated this about when life begins in the womb and it says here at the point of electric activity in the womb they don't even call it a heartbeat they don't even call it a baby they call it electric activity in the womb so you see now more and more of technology you know technology has its down points but it also has its good points as well and we see that personhood is now fast becoming uh, a talking point for us. It's taken us 50 years to realize it. But but on a larger philosophical level, basically, you know, God is stating it is life, mm -hmm. Mago Dei, 
a man is saying, no, 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 viability, four weeks, you know, electrical pulse. I mean, and so and, and, and that's a large part of this also, is it not? Yeah, it's, it's all philosophical. And, and it goes back to the point of, you know, my body, my choice. You know, it's the, the me, me, me. Um, I well, was that's, a, that's kind of the point. It's not your body. No, it's not. And and I went back to a conversation I had with somebody at one of our, I don't know if we were at the Capitol, we were doing something there. We were having a rally. I forget what it was. And someone, somebody came up to me and she said, you know, you don't, you don't agree with women's rights. We have rights as women to have an abortion if we want to. It's my body. And I said, let, let me, you know, very calmly, I said, excuse me, let me ask you something. So the population of the United States, 310 million plus or minus. Back then. Yeah, so maybe 150, 155 million are female, right? She said, yeah, that's right. So I said, well, if you're having an abortion, 50% of the births plus or minus are female. So what you've just done is you said, my woman, my body, my choice, a woman's right. I said, you've just taken away the right of that baby in the womb. Mm-hmm. Because 50% of the births are females. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it was like the deer in the headlight look. She couldn't say anything more to me. She just said, well, it's still my right. It's still my right. Mm-hmm. I said, well, that's right. It is your right. Mm-hmm. But what about the right of that babe in the womb? Mm-hmm. Don't they have a right? Currently, your legal right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, w- one thing that uh, there's so much about this that, that's uh, so important, but I'll, let's talk uh, kind of dovetail from that. I understand there's Senate legislation. P-E-T-C-H-A that's uh, of interest? Mm-hmm. There is. L- let me let me step back a second because I wanted to sure. bring this up as well. The Declaration of Independence. You know, our forefathers thought through this. You know, it's amazing the wisdom that they had um, given to them by God for the, just in the Declaration of Independence. You know, we, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. That is... Among these, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And take a moment and study the word unalienable. Mm-hmm. What it is, it's God-given. Mm-hmm. That means it's a God-given right that can't be taken away mm-hmm. by government. God's given that right. Mm-hmm. And it's, he's given all of us, you know, Steve Craddock, Dwayne Hack, the right to life. Mm-hmm. That's, our, that's our first right, is mm-hmm. to have life. So the other thing I wanted to talk about was PETCHA, P-E-T-C-H-A. And, and I just ran across this the other day. Um, I got some information from Georgia Right to Life, and they sent me some flyers and some information on it. And it's going on in the U.S. Senate right now. And it's it's kind of interesting, as I really got to study in it and diving deep into it, of what ex- what exactly it is. Uh, P-C-H-E-T-A, it's called Senate Bill 2243. It's coming out of the U.S. Senate. And it's called the Palliative Care and Hospice Education and Training Act, PETCHA. Um, It's been around for a while, um, but it was resurrected strongly this past session, and now it's being uh, on September the 21st. They were having some uh, Senate committee meetings to talk through it. But in order to understand it, I think you have to understand what the word palliative and hospice really mean. And so palliative means care given to those with serious issues, heart attack, dementia, Parkinson. That's care that's given to them. It's palliative care. Hospice is end of life. It's care and comfort to those who the doctor feels life is six months or left. Oh, left. So you, you define what those two are. But, but here's the issue that we have with this bill. It's very um, broad. It's not uh, specific. There's no specificity within the bill at all. It just says the Senate's asking the House to grant money for this act to be able to hand out for palliative or hospice or doctor training okay three issues two issues that i have with it is first of all there's no specificity and i think we're going to get in trouble goes back to the point of, of planned parenthood and we can talk about that in a second but the other part is there's not a doctor issue there's a nurse issue if you go back and look at all these studies about where jobs are at it's not necessarily in the doctor's field but it's in the nurses' field. So they're wanting to grab this money saying that we're going to use it to bring in more doctors to help us in these areas. But there's not a need for doctors. It's a need for nurses to administer. And then secondly is how how does the funds flow out? There's nothing in the bill that states how the funds can flow out, either for palliative or for um, Hospice. hospice care. There's a group called Compassion and Choices. Now listen. 
I'll read it slow so you can understand, and, and, and the listeners can too. Compassion and choices. Help us make a difference by contacting your legislator today, talking about this bill. If passed, the Palliative Care and Hospice Education Training Act would promote excellence in palliative care through training for health professionals through training centers, national research, national education, awareness campaign to inform patients, families, and health professionals about the benefits of palliative care. Okay, that, that's, that's okay. If you are comfortable telling your personal story of how you came to support medical aid in dying, please include it in the edible part of your cover letter. Okay, there's the red flag. Because now they're saying we're going to go ahead and talk about palliative care and helping people who have dementia, who have had a heart attack. But now they're saying, and oh, by the way, if you're going through this in a dying state, we'd like to hear from you. So who's to say that those funds that the Senate's looking for from the House is not going to take those funds and use it for more towards the hospice care? Steve Graddick, you had a heart attack. We know you're not feeling well, but let me ask you something. Let me, let me give you this and make you comfortable in these years and not take care of the need that you have. And so now all of a sudden you're looking at it from a hospice venture versus a palliative care venture, which takes me to Planned Parenthood. How are we doing for time? We good? Good, good, good. So we talk about Planned Parenthood. This is, this is almost the book that was written for Planned Parenthood. The almost beginnings to the T, the yeah. beginnings of Planned yeah. Parenthood. Last year, Planned Parenthood, $670 million, or 2022, they just released the number, $670 million. It was an increase of 5.8% in funds over 2021 funds. When you go back and look at their report for 2022, okay, the, again, they say, you know, we're here to help people. We're here to help them, administer them, help them with their pre prenatal care, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. In 2022, 374,155 abortions. That's 1,025 a day. The hour we're here, 43. 43 babies were aborted in just that one hour that we were here. In 2022, it was the second highest year in the recording at Planned, in 20 years at Planned Parenthood for abortions. But here's what they did. They took the funds. Remember, we're talking about this PT, PCHET. They took the funds and they said, we're going to use these funds for prenatal care to help individuals through their pregnancy. In 2022, prenatal services were down 29%. Miscarriage services were down 5%. Adoptive services down 7%. Pregnancy testing down 3.7%. Abortions over the past 20 years up 75.6%. Parental <clears throat> services down 60%. And so I'm not for this, let's give us the money and let us figure it out because you're using that money for your lights, for your education, for your informational well, needs. Every time you say money, you should say taxpayer money. Yeah, taxpayer money. You're absolutely right. So I'm not for that taxpayer money, that $670 million given to them from your money and my money and Collins, every, all of our tax dollars. I'm mm -hmm. not for that. Mm -hmm. And so what this bill in the Senate now is leaning towards is give us some money so that we can go ahead and, and d devise plans and ways that we can go ahead and palliative and hospice with no defined specificity of how it's going to be used. Mm -hmm. And that's where we have a problem with it. And I think a lot of people, once they read into it, again, you got to go deeper. I mean, well, when you when you have abortion on demand, you have a basically you throw out sanctity of life and you have quality of life. And there's no reason the quality of life criteria cannot be applied to the elderly, the infirmed and the sick at the end of life. And that's one way for the government to reduce the the roles of Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, but the personhood amendment addresses that also. Yes, yes, it does. It does. Life, liberty, pursuit of happiness, and its end of life. And again, if we could take a stand that says, not if we can, we have to take a stand that says personhood is from the moment of conception until natural death. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's natural death. It's not being forced through or by the government. The, the woman who came up to you uh, that you related a little while ago, at some point she may be 80, 85, 90, 92 with dementia and uh, all kinds of medical issues. And who's going to tell her that she has to end her life prematurely? You know, I mean, that's the slippery slope. And uh, 
she may be pro-choice, but I wonder if she's pro-choice when she's 90. Absolutely. So Absolutely. it's a, a horrible, horrible situation. Yeah. It's, and, and that's why we got to get, the, and again, the devil's in the details. I mean, you yeah. know, it's like the smoke and mirrors. You know, give us the money and we'll handle it on our side yeah. and we'll make sure it's done properly. You know, show me how it's going yeah. to be used. I'm from here from the government. I'm here to help you. That's right. We'll be back with more with Dwayne Hack, president of West Georgia Right to Life after this. The AP Scholar Journey at Oak Mountain Academy is designed to provide students with a clearly defined advanced placement curriculum track to earn a series of distinctions upon graduation. This journey enables academically prepared students to pursue college-level studies throughout 17 AP courses in five subject categories while enrolled at OMA. I'm Patrick Uran, Head of School, inviting you to journey with us on the mountain. For more information, visit us at oakmountain.us. Discover your journey at OMA. Prepare, explore, and achieve. Health is a journey. It's making better choices, even when it's not easy. It's taking care of yourself and the people you love. At Tanner Health System, we're there for you with every step, with primary care, heart care, cancer care, women's care, orthopedics, surgical services, and so much more. We're dedicated to helping you live and feel your best. So let's get on that journey to health. You've got places to be for many years to come. Find us at Tanner.org. Good morning. Welcome back. As we wrap up this morning, we're just going to take a few seconds uh, because we referenced some numbers of 63 million plus, but those numbers are grossly unreported. And part of the reason is for chemical uh, abortions now, which are uh, unfortunately legal. It was slipped in. um, RU 486 was slipped in under the last year of the Clinton administration from France, and it was the beginnings of what we have today, which is chemical abortion. How would you describe it? Dwayne? 54% of the abortions in America are now chemical abortions. They've overtaken surgical abortions, and basically it's a two-pill system. Uh, Mifeprestone, uh, which you can see uh, when it's handed out, it's called Mifeprex, and then Misoprostol is the second pill. It's two pills. You take the first one, and what that does is it stops the progestion that the baby needs for growth uh, within the mother's womb. So basically you're starving the baby to death, and then the second one, Misoprostol is the second one I take, and it basically forces a miscarriage. So it's a two-piece uh, pill. Take one, 48 hours, you take the second one. In the state of Georgia, um, we uh, are strongly against it. Um, Georgia Right to Life is. But one thing that Georgia State did was they said you can't do telehealth. Um, and several states are doing telehealth now. So it's something that has fast become, like you said, it was 486. It was brought in during the chemical, during the uh, Clinton administration. Really, the name comes from the founders. It's Rosell Uclaf Corporation, which was the founding uh, corporation that came up with that. 86 was a serial number. So more and more information is coming out on this. You'll be seeing a lot more from us. Go to westgeorgiarighttolife.org. You can pick up some information from us or give me a call. 470-370-2452. Be glad to send you some information. We have a mailing list of over 1,000 people now that we're sending out information on different subjects just like chemical abortion. And I understand the weather is going to be perfect on October 21st at 10 a.m. Is that correct? Absolutely. We're praying hard. We're praying really hard. It should be fine. Again, uh, October 21st in Carrollton from 10 to 11 a.m. Again, feel free to give me a call. 470-370-2452. Four seven zero three seven zero two four five two. 370 Reach out to me. Send me a text. Give me a call. We can give you more information on it. Uh, expecting a great turnout. Asking the Lord to bring people out to us. Spend some time and make your voice be known. That's what we're all about. Being a voice for those who have no voice. I guess this morning has been Dwayne Hack, President of West Georgia Right to Life. Thank you for listening. Thank you to our sponsors. God bless. Go out and make it a great day. You're in tune to WLBB Carrollton.